Chris Tim just told me the best factoid mm. about Tom Petty. And I'm not going to share it with you. <laughs> it'd be too it'd be too much. Too no, much. He, well, you said, it, and this is why Chris Tim is such an expert on rock and roll. I can't tell you how I many people come up to me and say, my God, he is so great. He is. The other night, we were at our Two Guys Named Chris Comedy All-Star Show, and we had a little uh, meet and greet beforehand. You know, people wanted to have dinner, and we were chatting with them and everything. Open bar. Very nice. Little hors d'oeuvres. Very nice. A couple of nights there. And uh, I would be standing talking to somebody, and across the room would be Chris Tim. And they would just look over my shoulder and go, my God, look at him. He is so smart. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and as a fan of the show, mm. I can tell you, Kelly loves that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I love uh, anytime we're out, you know, you get that stuff where it's like, what's it like to work with him all day? Aren't you lucky? Yeah, well, you come try it. <laughs> They would. Hey, you know, yeah. I, would just, I would see Chris Tim, and there'd be a group of people around him just laughing and enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> and I could see the people talking to me going, how do I get in that group? How can I break away <laughs> and get over there yeah. <laughs> to that group, yep. to the better area, to the better Chris? <laughs> and they would say, I've thought about playing Put Up or Shut Up Rock and Roll Trivia, but I just would wilt. Yeah, you know, next I do get a lot of that. Yeah, and they, of course, they said, well, of course, I could play on Friday when you play. Yeah. yeah that's, that's easy. I get a lot of that, too. Easy pickings. Yeah, that's light work. As my son would say, that's light work when you go in on a Friday. <laughs> Tim just told me that uh, the Tom Petty song, Running Down a Dream, which I love, mm -hmm. and never think of as being that old. That is a 30-year-old song. Yeah. I do that all yeah. the time. Isn't it? Early 90s? At least. At least, yeah. Oh, no. Is that late 80s? It's late 80s. That's You're right. 87, 88. Is that right? on, is that on um, Full Moon Fever? Full Moon Fever. Is that 88? So it's, it's a thir that's like a 34-year-old song. Now. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's one of my favorite songs on the album. Full Moon Fever is really when I got introduced to Tom Petty. I, you know, I never got into the rock and roll mm -hmm. growing up, but by the, that time I was in my late teens, and Tom Petty that album I thought was fantastic. Mm -hmm. well, it had so many hits on it, you know, tons of hits. Huge. So uh, Chris Tipper said that on the tour, the opening act was the Replacements, and they would drunkenly on stage call it "Running Down the Drain." Yeah. <laughs> Which didn't sit right with no. Tom so they Petty. were asked to leave the tour and were replaced with the Georgia Satellites. So the replacements were replaced by the exactly. Georgia Satellites. Now the replacements were. I mean, their reputation was. I mean, they would get faced mm -hmm. anywhere they went. Mm -hmm. I mean, so when you got them, mm -hmm. when you when you signed up for the replacements, that's yeah. what you were signing uh, up for. And it's funny, like uh, when we had that two guys in Chris Comedy All Star show the other night, and. One of the comedians said, boy, it has changed. He'd been doing comedy 30 years. And he said, it sure has changed. You know, in the old days, we'd all get drunk backstage or we'd you know, do some weed, do some coke. And I couldn't help thinking. I thought, didn't you want to stay sharp for the show? Didn't you want to stay, like, on target? And he said, no, nah, man, that's when you really loosen up. You know, when you're high, mm -hmm. you get out there. And, and I thought, no, that that's, is, that's not the way we work. Well, there's yeah. a tightrope, right? I would imagine that people who are in that, mm -hmm. at that level of creativity. Yes. Musicians. Yes. Com you know, good professional comedians. There's a tightrope you can walk. You know, where, yeah, you do, you might get looser. You might feel a little right. freer in your mind. But if you're watching, you might just think he's sloppy. <laughs> yeah. And there's a okay. fine line between that. Maybe if you go just far enough, you really are like zoned in. But if you go too far, then you're drunk. You know, then, yeah. you're, then it's then too you're much. A mess. It's, it's yeah. too much. So I said to Chris Tim, I guess Tom Petty was professional and wanted to keep it tight like that. <laughs> he probably, yeah, he probably ran a tight ship backstage but mm -hmm. sadly he died of what a drug overdose Fair too right. yeah er, too early now was that yeah, absolutely but wasn't that was tom petty did he get hooked on i know it was was it heroin was it heroin that killed him or just pain like he, opioids i thought he kicked heroin i did too yeah was, did he, but it was was it fentanyl that yeah killed I, th him? I think he had pain issues i think so by the end yeah it was because like a cocktail of things right right it's one of those things you know how it's such a sad story for so many now we're in a we're still in that opioid epidemic in this country yeah anytime we talk about that too so many people call and say yeah, I've, I've had that problem because yeah. you get pain and then the medication is so addicting. It's such a sad the pain story. is overwhelming. That's right. And the medication's addicting. That's right. And just a little bit too much can kill you, which is what happens to so many people, unfortunately, including Tom Petty. And, uh, you know, I, then I said, well, Matthew Perry. 
This is I, I turned it to Matthew Perry from Friends. Okay. And I will be reading his book. He's written a book? No. <laughs> I was going to say. I uh, No. There's no book. I will be reading it. When he writes the book, uh -huh. I'm going to read the book. Okay. I guarantee I, you that. I feel like someone will have to. He'll just have to. <laughs> Speak, and somebody will write it down for him. <laughs> I mean, no, knowing what we know, it, the fact that he's still alive is remarkable. Yeah. My God. I mean, it's got to be a you know hour by hour thing with the him. The stories you read about that guy, about Matthew Perry, and then when they did the Friends reboot, everybody said, oh, he's they were concerned for him. Off, off his game and all that. I just got an email two minutes before the, we went on this on our air from uh, Rusty, our statistician, who says that they've started streaming Friends in China but they change a lot of the uh, plots <laughs> in China. Well, the, the sec, especially sex, drugs, yeah, partying. That's, that's right. He had an article. I just skimmed the article, which is all I ever do. I skim. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they call the skimmer, mm -hmm. basically. People at the uh, two guys named Chris Comedy All Stars. Chris Tim goes. Chris Tim goes deep. <laughs> there he is. Who? You're the skimmer. <laughs> It's a weird street name. You're the skimmer. <laughs> That's right. Here's a fun fact. Yeah. Side note, before we get back to friends, oh, in, chi yes. friends yeah. in China. Yes. <laughs> if you're ever at a swimming pool and you know those little things that are right at the mm -hmm. water level with the doors that go open and shut where yeah. the bugs float in yeah. and the band-aids float in and the yeah. air floats in, yeah. those are called skimmers. The skimmers, yeah. I've heard mm -hmm. that. <laughs> That's your skimmer. That's what I am. I collect band-aids and hair. <laughs> there he is. Fingernails. Detritus. Skimmer. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> the skimmer. Believing. That's what they call me. The skimmer is what I do. And um, anyway, this article was saying, uh, Chris Dem doesn't know the plot of the show, but David Twimmer's character, Ross, early on, he's been left by his wife, and she's in a lesbian relationship now. So okay. that's And that's pretty, uh, for that time, you know, there was a lot of comedy there because he was left by her, and she went to another woman. But they've cut all of that out. It, when I, I figured it was going to be something like that in China, they just say, no. uh, you know, she's uh, with another person. They mm -hmm. they change. Everything. She's moved on, mm -hmm. and, and that character's in it a lot. So, or like her new his ex wife and her new oh. girlfriend, and then wife, it, they're in it quite a bit. So they'll, they'll have to just edit out. There's there's one whole episode about her being married to the new woman. Mm -hmm. So they'll have to just k kill that one. That episode can't even air. Yeah. And then when they go to strip clubs and stuff, that's never referred to as a strip club. and Just a dance club. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, sex is not referred to at no. all. I didn't know it was like that in China. Well, I, you know, there was a head. Maybe you saw this too. What, two weeks ago, they said that, or maybe three, that, you know, the movie Fight Club, mm -hmm. which I think we've all seen in this room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was available in China, but they changed the ending. You yeah. know, they changed the ending so that the... Uh, like the corporations win, the little guy doesn't win, of course. <laughs> but due to the backlash, they changed it back to the original mm -hmm. American slash Hollywood ending. I didn't know that. They, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't either. I, I, I mean, didn't. why let it in if you're gonna exactly? Well, it's kind of like this Olympic decision they've made with this, uh, and this has nothing to do with China. I guess it's the Olympic Committee. But the girl from Russia, who's only 15, who's a favored to win a gold medal in her next event. She already won. She and the team Russians won the event, but uh, they had a you know big inquiry. They won't receive a medal, <laughs> right? So if she wins gold, there'll be no medal ceremony, and she won't win the gold medal. But, but she'll take first, <laughs> allowing her to compete. It's like how can you? It's like splitting it down the middle. You can't do that. Yeah. Either let her play or not. You know, is she allowed or is she not? She's allowed, but she can't really win. She can win, but she can't get the medal. Mm -hmm. that, that decision yeah, made no sense. to They me tried to explain it somewhat last night when I was watching, mm -hmm. and I guess it was like she tested positive back in Ru at the Russian nationals that she won. Yes, but it carries over. But this organization that. There is letting her compete is basically nothing to do with the Olympic organization. It's an outside mm -hmm. mediator. What a weird. It's so weird. And it's like one that they all agree to the Olympics, the mm. Russians, everything. And they said, we'll let her compete. So the Olympics are pissed off. Yeah. And they're like, fine. Well, no, uh, if you win, no ceremony. <laughs> okay. This should make you happy, though, Kelly, because you're the appeaser. It appeases everyone. And I pleases, try. And pleases no one. That's right. <laughs> That's that is exactly. Exactly. You I, should have been in charge of that's right. the, this this 15-year-old skater's uh, case. That's right. I appease. <laughs> and please. And please. But yet. That, no somebody, one's ever happy. Somebody told me once, if you want to survive in this business, you can't just be a pleaser and an appeaser because no one will wind up happy. And that's exactly what I've done. I've mm -hmm. tried to please and appease <laughs> for all these many years. Yep. 
And no one's ever. And we failed up to middle management. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That's exactly what's happened here. Sub middle. You're so right. You're exactly right. Uh, We have Melody on the phone to talk about Matthew Perry's book. Melody, go ahead. Hi. um, I'm a P1 from Myrtle Beach. Thank you. um, You're welcome. Yeah, I heard you say it, and I follow Matthew Perry on Instagram, and he actually posted. He has a book coming out November 1st of 2022. Oh, my God. It's a memoir, and it's called Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. Okay. Wow. How about that? I had you no manifested idea. it. I did. I'm reading that book. <laughs> I am reading that book. Thank you very I much. I you as soon as I saw it. <laughs> We're on like a wave. You should buy Melody a copy. I will. I don't know that I'll do that. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> He's not going to do that. <laughs> thank you, Melody, and thank you for listening. No, just leave her, her Benmo information with Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Just give uh, give her your Zell. Yeah. Give Biggie your Zell. We'll buy a <laughs> Zell. <laughs> Thank Get you. Get your hard copy. <laughs> I'm reading that book. Okay. That's exactly what I'm... Okay, good for you. This is great. My wife's birthday is in November. Will she buy it for herself? I'll buy it for her. That's exactly what she, I... You buy it for her for her birthday. Yeah. She'll buy it for you for Christmas. Yeah, or she'll just, I'll just borrow it back from her, you know, once yeah. she reads it. But I know she'll be interested in that. Mm-hmm. And this is a milestone birthday for my wife, so uh, get ready. Mm. Big party, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, she's as excited as you are. <laughs> she doesn't seem as excited as I am. I'm excited for my wife's milestone birthday. She can join me in a new decade. <laughs> yeah, you know, and right. so I'm excited about that. And the two of us, I think I'm I'm wanting a big party. That's awesome. That meth. I just I just, I just put it out to the universe. Put it out there. And now look. And Do you think he's um, surprised he has a book coming out? He may not know. <laughs> <laughs> when did I write it? Of, of the You're is right. he the first of that group to write a book? I think so. And he is... No one else has? Courtney Cox hasn't? Well... Not, not that I know he's of. He's the most interesting one, I think. The rest of them seem to just have, yeah, you know, pretty normal li- or, you know, fun lives. He is the one that has battled depression and uh, the drug use and all mm-hmm. of that kind of thing. So he probably has the most interesting... Speaking of interesting stuff, I started a story on Friday in Garbage Time about Chicken Salad Chick. I've held it until today. Yes. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made a note. Uh, this was Friday. We were going into the weekend, Super Bowl weekend, very end of the show. I mean, the tail end of garbage time. And I started a story about something I witnessed in a restaurant called Chicken Salad Chick. And Dave said, oh, hold it. Hold it. And I said, okay, I'll hold it till Monday. Next show. It, Wait. Yeah, he, he said, Monday's no, can't do Super it Monday. Super Bowl Monday. And Valentine's Day. Yeah. You can't do it either one of those days. So... I'll do it. So he said, hold it till Tuesday. So I have it today. And it Biggie will be a real help on this because he knows the menu of Chicken Salad Chick. Like Absolutely. The, like the back of his hand. Mm-hmm. That's the place that's got the fun names for their stuff. Okay. Did I tell you like I got the Ross and the Rachel? And- <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, you know, I deviated. I usually get the classic Carol. And on that day, on Friday, I had it and I got, uh, what's the one? Fruity Fran? Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I it was a mistake. You told me just stick with classic Carol, which is a, I should have done. Uh. Fruity Fran has a bunch of nuts and fruits inside of it. And it, it didn't mm-hmm. to me it was like classic Carol was a better yeah. choice for myself, you know, just just for me. Biggie's already saved me this morning as well. This is not the first time this has happened. He saved me a great deal of embarrassment. I sent him some audio that I had edited, but I had accidentally left on too much audio and oh. he caught it. He caught it, and that would have been that would have been a, a demerit for me. Correct. And so, luckily, Biggie said, "Hey, I think you meant to shave this part off." And I really appreciate okay, that. good. I appreciate that. that's a bonus. Well, because sometimes you like to leave a little tidbit, yeah, no, something, and no, I wanted to make you're sure right. you're right. Now, remember the time I left the N word in? Do I in a song? No, it was some uh, comment, audio clip comments from Cardi B. And, mm. uh, you know, I had said to Biggie, "This is fully edited. It's done. Just it's ready to air." And Biggie later said, I think you've made a mistake here. And I said, I doubt it. I doubt I've made the mistake. And he said, well, you left the N-word in. I said, that is a mistake. <laughs> Some would call it a mistake. <laughs> Biggie saved my career and my life. Not since day. a young George Bailey mm-hmm. kept the That's pharmacist right. That's right. in Bedford Falls. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> from giving out the wrong prescription in It's a Wonderful Life. That's exactly right. I've seen such a noble act. You're darn right. He did mm-hmm. it. For, you did. Yeah. I, I said to Biggie that day. You, you said, took a beating. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's good as it is. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you saved my career yes. and maybe my life by cutting out Cardi B's <laughs> N-word. 
two years ago. Did she really say that? <laughs> she did. She did. And there's your 80 year old reference for the day. <laughs> That's a well. Let's see if Dave beats that. 80. Okay. You got, you got an 80 year old movie, which I love, and let's see if Dave can beat that. Now, uh, here's another thing. This is interesting. Chris Tim found this interesting. A colleague and I are on Friday are taking a road trip to go to a uh, a client's new endeavor. I didn't know this. Yeah. No. We're going to tour a haunted house. Oh yeah. And I said, but it's February. And I said, zig when they zag. Huh? <laughs> you don't get success okay. uh-huh. by thinking like the other guy. Right. You know, let's open this. Look baby. at Tesla. That's right. Look at Apple. That's right. That's right. You think they're happy with a, a haunted house in October? No. We're going this Friday to go see a new haunted house. You think that's not going to be a great event? We're going down there to see the darn thing. And Will there be a lunch? I think so. Will yeah. you show eat in front of uh, colleagues? <laughs> Yes. And then sneak eat on the way home in the yeah. car. Yeah, I'll have a, a chopped salad with colleagues and then yeah. stop at chicken and pickles on the mm-hmm. way home. I've already had M&Ms this morning. I'm, I'm fallen. I'm I fallen don't know so that Biggie is aware of your... Uh, I've fallen so hard. I wondered because you've been really happy lately. I know. <laughs> Despite I mean, being in two diet tracks. I know, yeah. I know. I had some M&Ms this morning. You're just if, really excited. If Coach Kathy hears this, she's going to kill me. I, I, I mean, you, you just kind of... What's the word? You kind of slink out of the office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody knows what you're doing. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. can I ask this about your other challenge you're in? Yeah. How are the others doing? Can you tell? Yeah, they're doing great. Everybody. On Team Orange? Yeah. Team Do you Ar- think they're lying? <laughs> I hope so. We, we won't know. It's an eight-week challenge. We're into week three. Yeah, because I feel like people, naturally, you don't want to be the one to go, Yeah. hey, uh, I'm messing it up here. I, I, so instead, you go. Oh, I'm doing great. I know, I'm doing it, real good. It's possible that they're lying, just like I am, because I have fallen. It was the darn Mrs. Fields cookies, and I really, I have to blame <laughs> Biggie on that. My wife texted Biggie and said, "Oh, the dough is back at Costco. Should I buy it?" Biggie said, "God, yes, do it, you get it." <laughs> I've eaten all right those now. <laughs> I ate all those cookies. So a year ago, Biggie put a spoon of ice cream in your hand. Yes. Now he just he just sent a text to your wife. Yes. And you're falling apart. Yes. And so now I'm back on the cookie. I'm back on Diet Coke. Yeah. I just had M and M. Yeah, Diet Coke. I Diet Coke. That was what I heard cracking. Well, not today, but no. uh, I had one on Super. It was Super Bowl Sunday, and my wife came walking through with a six pack. You know, she's putting Diet Cokes in the fridge, and I said, "Why don't you stop right here with one of those, sweetheart?" And she gave me one, and I had like three during the game. Ah. And so then I had them again yesterday. I mean, you know, I, once I get started on one, I can't stop myself. Mm-hmm. My friend, young maybe Mike, you should write a memoir. I'm. You'd read that book. <laughs> I'm talking about a boring book. What if I wrote a book about my challenge? Appeasing and a pleasing. Yeah. <laughs> Appeasing and a pleasing. <laughs> I know. Well, again, one of those comedians was telling me the hell, the horror it was to quit cigarette smoking. I was like, yeah, that was me with Diet Coke, man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a Diet Coke in three days. <laughs> Little did I know. The next day, I'd be having. That's true. I'd be having. Yeah, a Diet 12 Coke. hours later. I was back on Diet Coke. Talk about a book nobody would read. My memoir. You know, if I were to write mm-hmm. this kind of, that kind of stuff, it's yeah. I hate to think it, but you know, we have we're still going through some of the the last of the boxes of my parents' belongings. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brothers and I kind of cleared out the last of the storage spaces, mm-hmm. and so I'm going through some of these things and the things that they have kept over the years. Some of them are remarkable. They're like they were things like uh, the rosary that my grandfather took with him to France. In World War One, incredible is still there, you know, and some uh, of that stuff, yeah. you know, you can't. Well, there's no value, but it's irreplaceable. But you showed us yesterday a chart that was incredible. It was like a, yeah. a, a of what to do in case of nuclear war. You know, where yeah, well, you go? Well, it was yeah, because my dad worked for the state of mm. Virginia, and it was like a, a nuclear fallout chart. Mm, yeah, <laughs> in case the bomb drops. You, yeah, you try to, and because Dave was looking at it, you you try to you. It's like a slide rule. Yeah. You set one control to how big you think the bomb was, and mm. then you put one where you are, and it tells you whether you're going to be vaporized <laughs> yeah. or agonizingly die of radiation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want a slide rule to it's tell me that. It's a great chart. It's quite a chart. <laughs> it yeah. really was. How bad it's going to be for slow, yeah. agonizing mm-hmm. death or just immediate. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you, but as you look through the, you know, the, the contents of a life, the things that people choose to save, mm-hmm. and you think, well, someday this will tell my story. Yes. 
But no one will read your story. No, my most story. people don't want to read right. your story. What will my kids say that they found left behind? Uh, rappers, old <laughs> Eminem rappers, right. Diet Coke cans. There's not much. Yeah, like a crushed can somewhere in a corner. Yeah, uh, secreted away head. food receipts. No, yeah. no substance really of any kind. Dirty spoons. Exactly. The 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 things you leave behind. Peanut butter crusted spoons. Yeah, that's all there is. That's I had. That's all we are. Mm-hmm. I had the weirdest dream about you. Me last night. Yeah. It involves your favorite, one of your favorite places, chicken and pickles. Yeah. And it was at the new one, mm-hmm. and you got stuck in there, mm-hmm. and I had to come get you. Mm-hmm. That's right. I couldn't. <laughs> I, like, literally, I had to come pick you up because you were so worried that you left your car in the drive through line, mm-hmm. and I had to come get you and bring you to the station because you were worried about missing work. It, well, that could happen because they're so <laughs> slow and inept at that chicken and pickles. <laughs> I could wind up trapped so in So that's there. something that they could definitely find some chicken and pickles bags. Well, they would.